Hi, I'm Haley Silveri, and I'll be presenting a novel pilot faculty-focused coaching model in pediatric urology and how it benefits both teacher and learner. This work was funded by the Intuitive Foundation via the 2023-2024 Training in Human Performance Research Grant. The basic principles and framework behind surgical coaching employed in this study are the teachings of the Academy for Surgical Coaching, through which I am a certified surgical coach. From the Academy, coaching emphasizes the development and refinement of a surgeon's existing skills and empowers that individual to make improvements to their own practice. Surgical coaching has been shown to improve a surgeon's technical and non-technical skills, as well as a surgeon's ability to self-assess. However, there are gaps in whether surgical coaching impacts the training environment or a surgeon's teaching abilities. Additionally, surgical coaching has not been formally studied in pediatric urology. So in this study, we implement the first described pediatric urology faculty-focused coaching model targeting robotic-assisted cases and aim to evaluate the impact on training environment, training autonomy, and whether a surgeon's teaching skills can improve with coaching. We adapted our model from the Wisconsin Surgical Coaching Framework. We selected an expert coaching model and recruited one coach with greater than 15 years of robotic surgical experience and designated compensation for efforts. We have two faculty robotic surgeons serving as coaches. Data was collected via REDCap hosted surveys. All robotic cases were eligible from July 1st through March 31st, 2024. Inclusion was based on convenience sample. Arm 1 consisted of real-time coaching and Arm 2 of remote, only post-operative coaching. Our comprehensive model covers the four focuses of surgical coaching. However, the specific data discussed here falls within the focus of surgeon interpersonal skills. Within the model, prior to each included case, the coach and coachee meet to set goals for the case, and the coachee will complete a goal setting form. For arm one only, during the case, the coach is president. They will take notes and provide real-time coaching. Following the case, the trainee, the OR staff, will complete evaluation forms. Postoperatively, the coach and coachee meet to debrief, and both will fill out a debrief form. Lastly, the plan from the debrief is put into action to encourage surgeon goal achievement and continuity of the cycle. This cycle repeats itself for all cases included in the study. We designed the study such that we evaluate the data and model every three months and allow for adaptations with the goal of developing an ideal model that is data-driven to suit the needs of our group, as well as allowing space for individual improvement that is data-driven. Assessments were selected or designed to achieve each aim. To evaluate the training environment, we surveyed OR staff members, RNs, surgical techs, and anesthesia staff via a DeNova designed 360 review survey to gauge environment and engagement of trainees. To evaluate trainee autonomy, both trainee and faculty surgeon completed a Zwish scale to measure autonomy provided to the trainee. On a scale of one to four, four being the most autonomy or supervision only. Meaningful, meaningful autonomy was defined as a score of three or four. To evaluate surgeon teaching abilities, the trainees completed a set queue, which we abbreviated from its original version to include only most pertinent domains of goal setting, feedback, and a global teaching evaluation. For our results, there were 40 included cases, 22 in ARM1 and 18 in ARM2. Case types are shown here with pyeloplasty being the most common case. Survey completion rate was 64% for trainees with 35 completed surveys. Completion rate for the OR staff was 38% with 53 completed surveys. For results from the 360 review survey from the OR staff, you can see here the responses were exceedingly positive regarding interaction between trainee, coach, and coachee, and majority agreed that the trainee's experience was not hindered by the presence of a coach. This graph illustrates the trend of increased autonomy for the fellow over time. On a scale of one to four, with four being the most autonomy or supervision only, the orange line is the fellow response and the blue is the faculty surgeon response, with the green line representing the threshold for meaningful autonomy. Meaningful autonomy as perceived by the trainees was achieved 71% of the time with the fellow, 50% senior residents, and 8% of junior residents. Meaningful autonomy was more frequently denoted by faculty than by trainees. We found fair agreement between coachee and trainee reported autonomy. Lastly, we found that surgeon teaching abilities improved throughout the study from quarter one to quarter three, and we observed a significant improvement throughout the study period in total SECU score and domains for goal setting and global teaching evaluation. We observed a positive and engaging environment for trainees within the operating room. We identified an appropriate increase in fellow autonomy throughout the study period. We observed an improvement in surgeon teaching skills. So with this, we conclude that implementation of a faculty coaching model would be beneficial to traditional training paradigms. Thank you.